All right, so we're gonna start chapter six, which is photosynthesis. And we are going to do our notes in three different parts. So you won't be turning anything in until the very end of the last section here. And I'll tell you at the end of that video that it's time. So we're gonna be looking for things that are green whenever you're writing your notes out. And it doesn't start off with you having to take a whole lot of notes. A lot of the stuff you did touch on in the vocab anyhow, so there's no need to write it down twice. Just kind of listen and take it in. So organisms can be classified according to how they get energy. And I have this picture here of Willy Wonka and he's driving the guests through his chocolate river. There are some plants and some mushrooms in there and fungi, though we think that they're plants, actually take in nutrients by eating it. They're decomposers. They're actually not photosynthesizers. So mushrooms are closely related to, or closer related to us than they are to actual plants, even though they look more like plants. So people there, we are the ones that have to eat everything with the heterotrophs and the plants in there are the autotrophs. And there's Willy Wonka with his little candy. So by definition, we know that an autotroph is an organism that's gonna use sunlight to get energy, or it's gonna get energy from chemical bonds and inorganic substances to make organic compounds. For example, this plant here. This is a fruit, and we would actually go to eat that fruit in order to get energy, and the plant is actually using its leaves to get photosynthesis in order to make that fruit. Now the goal of a fruit is to have something there for the seed to eat, and that way it can become a big plant itself. So this is what you're gonna start writing down here. Most autotrophs use photosynthesis. Just that one little note, you're only paying attention to the stuff in green as far as taking notes goes. Photosynthesis is the conversion of light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of organic compounds, which are carbohydrates. We get glucose from plants. Heterotrophs, these are animals and other organisms that must get energy from food instead of directly from sunlight or inorganic substances. So I got a little kitten here, and a lot of people think this is a dog, and I think these little animals are so cute. They're called a fox. It's actually a fennec fox, and they have huge ears, so they are really, really good at hearing everything. You can actually own fennec foxes, but it's best to leave them in the wild. They are nocturnal animals, and it's not like a cat nocturnal where you know cats just kind of chill by themselves, and then they might get a little crazy at night, but they're cool otherwise, a fennec fox is going to go absolutely nuts at night. They have like, I don't know, five different noises that they can make. They chirp, they howl. They're kind of similar to a dog and that you can dress them up. They do exhibit a lot of food predatory type of actions where if you're eating a steak, that fox is going to become a little bit um, aggressive towards you because it wants to have the steak and it believes that everything is its property, not your property. So while they are absolutely adorable little creatures, it's best to leave them in the wild. I have a lady here, she's making sandwiches. And when we talk about heterotrophs making their own food, this is not what I mean. I don't mean, or an autotroph can make its food. We are not autotrophs because we can make a sandwich and we eat plants. If we didn't consume the nutrients, we wouldn't have any. So we cannot make it ourselves using sunlight. We actually have to either cook something or put it together and then ingest it. So this is not autotrophic behavior. Photosynthesis is known as a biochemical pathway, which involves a complex series of chemical reactions in which the product of one reaction is consumed in the next. And they always like to throw a question in there about a biochemical pathway on your keystone. So you will have a question about biochemical pathways on your test as well. Just know that products of one reaction are gonna be consumed in the next reaction. So for example, this is like a biochemical pathway. So we have the sunlight, it's giving off energy. That plant is going to use that energy to create food. In turn, this caterpillar here is going to eat this leaf, so everything that the plant made is now going into the caterpillar. Everything the caterpillar is now making from eating this food is going to go into the bird. 
So everything that one person makes, that one item makes, goes into something else. This is another example of a biochemical pathway. We have photosynthesis done by autotrophs, gives off organic compounds and oxygen. Cellular respiration, which is done by autotrophs and heterotrophs, they take in those organic compounds and oxygen, they give off carbon dioxide and water, and then that goes back into photosynthesis. So it just keeps going around and around in circles. Autotrophs use photosynthesis to produce organic compounds from carbon dioxide and water. The oxygen and organic compounds that are products of photosynthesis are then used in a process called cellular respiration. That's what we're going to talk about in chapter seven in like two weeks. In cellular respiration, carbon dioxide and water are produced, which are the reactants in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis can be divided into two stages. The first one is light reactions, where light energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy, which is then temporarily stored in ATP and the energy carrier molecule ADPH. And step number two is the Calvin cycle. This is where organic compounds are formed using carbon dioxide and the chemical energy stored in ATP and NADPH. This is the equation for photosynthesis, and you'll get really used to seeing this, either written out in words or using the chemical symbols. So 6CO2 plus 6H2O with light energy is going to yield C6H12O6 and 6O2s. If you put that into words, it's carbon dioxide plus water with light gives us sugar and oxygen. So stage one is the light reactions, and we're going to begin with the absorption of light in the chloroplast. Characteristics of the chloroplast are the organelles found in cells of plants and algae that carry out photosynthesis. And this is what a chloroplast looks like. I had the same picture in your notes. Vocab. It has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The stroma is this jelly-like fluid. Thylakoids are each individual disc. Aluminae is just this connective tissue here. And a granum is an entire stack of thylakoids. And this is where the light reactions are going to take place. So we have the chloroplast being surrounded by two membranes. Inside the membranes are stacks of flattened sacs called thylakoids. The thylakoids are connected and layered to form stacks called grana. Singular form is granum. The stroma is a solution surrounding the grana, much like our cytoplasm. Light from the sun appears white. However, it is actually made up of all the colors of a rainbow. So here's the little prism, and when it projects the light back out, you see a rainbow. And that is very similar to what happens, you know, right after it rains, you have these water droplets still in the air because it's humid. And if light hits those water droplets, that's what gives you that really pretty rainbow. When light hits an object, the colors it is made up of can be reflected, transmitted, or absorbed. So reflection is where it bounces off. Absorption is where it's taken in, and transmission is where it goes right through it. Pigments, by definition, is the compound or substance that helps an object absorb light. By absorbing certain colors, a pigment is going to subtract those colors from the light spectrum. So in plants, the leaves are going to absorb all of the colors except for green. So that is why the leaves tend to look green to us because green is going to be reflected while all the other colors are taken in. So here's the white light coming in and all of these colors here are going to be absorbed and then green is going to be reflected back. So that is what we see the plant as being. Thylakoids contain several pigments including chlorophyll and carotenoids. Chlorophyll is a green pigment present in plants. It gives plants their green color and reacts with sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to produce carbohydrates. Green is just the best color to get all those things together. This is what a plant looks like up close. If we magnify a leaf, you can see that there's kind of little boxes inside of it, and each one of these boxes is an individual plant cell. If we go in a little bit closer, now you can see the individual chloroplasts, and each cell has a ton of chloroplasts because they need a lot of organelles to produce this energy for them. So chlorophyll A, there's going to be more than one type of chlorophyll. It mostly absorbs red light and is indirectly or is directly involved in the light reactions. Chlorophyll B is going to be absorbing, absorbing blue light. 
and a carotenoid is going to be a pigment that aids in photosynthesis. It's going to be doing the colors yellow, orange, and brown. In the leaves of plants, chlorophylls are much more abundant and they mask the colors of all the other pigments. In the parts of the plant that don't carry out photosynthesis, such as the fruits and the flowers, the other colors are going to be visible because chlorophyll is not present in those structures. I do have a video here that I will play in class, but for those of you who are at home watching this, just for the sake of time, and I don't want to have a 48 minute video, we're going to skip over it. In the fall, many plants are going to lose their chlorophylls, and that means that they're going into a dormant stage, so they're going to take on the pigments of those carotenoids, which is why the leaves turn those pretty oranges, reds, and yellows. And that is where we are going to stop for today. Next time we pick up with part two of our notes. So make sure you have everything written down that's in green. And we'll get back to this in a couple days.